was the most beautiful and wonderful blessing I could have ever had because if not for him, I don't think that I would actually be here with you today. Sister Hager. Wow. <laughs> Where do I start? Um, I mean, just to you know, follow up on what Fatima is saying, I mean, I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for him. I mean, I've spent all of my adult years and most of my childhood years um, in the community or, you know, being taught under my father, and I've just seen him do amazing things. I mean, there's nothing that would change me, taint me, bribe me, whatever, to make me see him any different than he is. I guess they knew who to come to. You know, I, I must say, they had to know who to go to because there's some of us, there's many others like me, that we are untaintable. It's just nothing is going to budge us from knowing who he is. I mean, I could, there's so much to go into. I mean, just something as simple as when he would write and just watch the way information would come through him, from him, above him, everywhere. I mean, you just knew that there is something truly different about this man. There's something truly special about him. And it's not even a thing of it being for just Nubian people, black people. I mean, it's just, I don't know of a person that didn't see him that way, you know, to be honest. I mean, because we would go out to restaurants and you have, you know, white American people and they were fascinated by him. They wanted to pull up a chair, and he would be given class, and they want to pull up a chair and sit there. And we want to know, what, you know, what's this man know? I can feel his energy, you know, and they're saying, you know, what, you know. And, um, I mean, like, seriously, it was just amazing the impact that he would make, and he was just always for family. He's just always for his family, always for the family, you know. I mean, he never did anything... And just to show you that he's somebody that couldn't have possibly been doing these things or a person that didn't have anything to hide. I mean, like you said, we lived in a communal environment. Nobody's door was locked. You know, anything he did, somebody was with him. He never walked alone. I mean, never, me to the point where he would complain, like, what do I have to do to get a moment alone? Like, it's impossible for me to get a moment alone. He was never alone. I mean, like, he goes to the bathroom and somebody's knocking. How do you want your eggs for breakfast? Knock, knock. What do you want? Oh, we have the proofs for this book. Knock, knock. You know, I mean, he, he gets no privacy. And how is it that a person who, and then another thing I want to touch on is, how is it that a man that can write 360 books, which none of the best authors in the world, in the history of the world, has ever done, how does he have time to have so much sex? I mean, is that even possible? I mean, it, it's not possible. You know what I'm saying? His time was put. I mean, and everybody that worked with him, he had a routine of things getting done. I mean, he had the brothers, where he worked with the brothers, the brothers who were the architects. He sit with them, and they drew up the plans. He worked with the people who's going to go get... He was very, a very hands-on type of person. He worked with the people who's going to get the permits. He worked with the people that's going to do the building. He worked with the people that's going to arrange the plants. He went out there when people was painting. I mean, then he goes, that's just, that's just one aspect of it. Then as far as the business, I mean, he worked with the people who are working on books. If he's going to buy a certain type of computers, he worked with the people on that. And it was always a collective thing. He wants to know what everybody thinks. What do you think? What kind of computers do you think we should get, Rick? What kind of computers do you think we should get, you know, Pam? What kind of, you know, like, what does everybody think? He wanted everybody's input. It wasn't a thing that was based on him. He just happens to be the one with that energy. He's special, you know, and it's who he is. And the thing is, is that I'm tired of us having to paint a picture, a different picture to satisfy the egos of all these other people. I mean, the reality is, Yes, Pops is special. What do y'all want us to say? <laughs> you know, they want us to say, oh, no, you know, it wasn't just up to him. You know, he wasn't the one. There's, got, there's 50 other people that, that's doing it. Nobody can write like he writes. 
You know, that's the reality, and unfortunately that made him a target. He's taught us to see what he sees through his eyes, but we cannot necessarily do what he does because he may see through all of our eyes here, but we may not be able to see through his other eyes because our experiences are different. Our lives are different. We're different types of people. So he can see through all of our eyes as one individual. That's heaven sent. You know, and he was sent here... You know, he was sent here to, to save his people, you know, and to do what he can. And I don't even want to taint it or change it into being a thing of so much of a his people thing because that wouldn't even be realistic because Pops was always teaching. No matter what color you are, what belief you are, what religion you are, he would teach you willingly, happily. You know, that is who he is. He was just here to give us information. He was here to teach. And he wanted the best for everybody. He wanted people to better themselves. He wanted people to be successful. There's people who have stories of, you know, being on the streets and having, you know, I don't even know. I mean, thanks to the most high. I don't even know what that stuff is. I mean, I, I mean, I don't even know the other side of certain things. That's the reality that I have to say, like Papa said. I loved it. I love not being tainted. You know what I'm saying? And the reality is that our safe haven has been removed from us. And another reality is that the people who've done this, just to remind them, when all else gets rough, you always ran home. Where do you have to run to now? Because you just basically destroyed where, you know? You got rid of that safe house. The reality is that, okay, I wanna go have experiences in the world. You go out to the world to have those experiences, when things don't go right, what do you do? You come back home. You know what I'm saying? If you get evicted from your the apartment, you say, who can I stay with? What family member? I'm going back home to my parents' house. I'm going to my sister's house. What happens if you if you destroy what she has or he has? What, you don't have anything to come back to, and that's the reality. And I, that's just putting it in a realistic standpoint for people who just live a regular life in a regular world. But on our, on our side of things, we had one whole fortress or home that we all work towards maintaining so that we can all have somewhere that we can call our own because as individuals you're never going to make it in this country as an individual so we said let's come together and make it together we weren't bothering anybody we didn't do drugs we didn't i mean we didn't drink we had clean fun every event and we had many events and every event was a clean event. I mean, like, everything we did was clean, and anybody was welcome. We lived in Putnam County. We opened up the doors for people in Putnam County to come out. I, I was a part of organizing many events where we opened up the doors for people in Putnam County to come get to know us. We had nothing to hide. If we had something to hide, we would not have had events. You know, we didn't stop the sheriff when he came to the gate. They've come there many times and they were living this way. And then all of a sudden one day they started jumping in and it's like, oh, what's going on here? They've raided us before. We've, you know, we've, Pops has walked around with them on the land. They've opened doors and looked in people's houses and looked in the silos where we had our books stored. And the reality was they were just like, oh, okay. And some of them even made comment like, well, can we come out here and hunt? Because we heard that there were some, uh, one of a kind species of deers and different animals out there on the property that we had acquired, which we didn't know. We, we don't kill animals. That's another reality as New Orleans. We don't do that. So they came out there, officials, and after they finished questioning him, walking around, looking through our houses, wanting to know who's who, they've, they've even pulled people out of the crowd to question this.